the Hendrix Handle House. Lived here back in the 60s. Start on the lower ground floor, so that's the kitchen area, Handles and um, Lebanon. Okay. And then you make your way up here. This is the floor parlor, and the back parlor is just this area here. Make your way upstairs to the dining room. Handles bedroom and right on the top on the third floor is the Hendrix bedroom. Walk your way all the way around to the Queen's staircase and you'll end your tour here. So we have volunteers on each of the floors that give you more information about the space in general or just any inquiries you may have. Um, the bathroom is downstairs and also on the second floor. If you need them and there's lockers as well if you want to put anything in the lockers. Okay, yeah. thank you. So um, thank you hopefully you enjoy your tour and if you need any help, let us know. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is this original furniture in here? Yeah, so um, some of the furniture is from that period of time, but not from this actual house. Okay. So um, you'll find a few pieces, so like the paintings, they're original paintings, but um, from artists that Handel had um, pieces of. So okay. It's the original painting but the, um, that he had, the artist that he okay. used. And that says he lived here for 35 years? Yes, most of his life. Yeah, he died in his house. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Good. Yes. This is Handel's bedroom. There, there were very small people back then, huh? I think the bed is shorter because they used to sleep sitting up. Oh, really? Yeah, it helps with their digestion. They probably were eating. They must have been eating a lot of acidic food. Yeah. yeah. Check this out. Look at that stack of marshals. Can you imagine this being played in this small place? He will blow the roof off of this thing. It's the first instrument that Jimmy played when he first came to the UK. And he says that it still has the strings that he was strung with with when he played it so and he's remained this way since that time so it's displayed here i'm not quite sure what guitar this is it's nothing that i'm familiar with but it's an old instrument roll country world music folk music and classical music not what you initially think be records in jimmy's collection but what we have to think is that Ron, Jimmy was a teenager in the 1960s, 50s, 50s he was a teenager. Um, and I doubt very much he was listening to Pat Boone and Bill Haley. He would be listening to rock and roll sung by Little Richard. Um, Little Richard, uh, Jimmy always from being a little boy wanted to play, wanted a guitar. They were very poor. They couldn't afford one. 
um, he acquired a broomstick and rang around the neighborhood uh, playing the broomstick in Seattle. Uh, his teachers were sorry for him. They got a cigar box and fixed it on the broom box, um, broom like a, a, a sound box. Uh, and I have this, I, I, with Jimmy, every time there's a story, there are six versions, so mm -hmm. this is my idea. Jimmy is running around the neighborhood, and actually, although Little Richard is known as the Georgia Peach, his family live around the corner from Jimmy's family. They all worship in the same Pentecostal church. So I've got this little boy with the broomstick guitar, and Little Richard drives up in his shiny Cadillac with his silk mohair suit and his wonderful hairstyle, or beard or wig, and this little boy with the broomstick guitar says, I so want some of that. And actually he gets it because he becomes a rhythm guitarist in Little Richard's band. Reconfigured. I mean, there is a bedroom and there is a bathroom um, and I think there's a kitchen or something up there. It's really funny because I found that here in this newspaper. Oh. That's from the 60s? Yeah. I, it was, I mean, it was just ironic. It was New Musical Express, oh. May 1967. And there, there it is there, look. Yeah. And it was like, for me, it was very personal because my brother was the DJ at that. Wow. That's wonderful. Actually, Kenny Jones, the drummer with the faces, he did his first recording session. <laughs> you can film me, let me play some Hendrix stuff. Don't want to give him a point. Well, well Jimmy didn't play Hendrix play stuff in here. He played all kinds of things in here. He played all kinds of things Ooh, in here. You know what? I know what to play. Pretty was a, an outrageous. See, I like Jimmy. Actually, all right. Yeah. So, did you, when you were learning guitar, ever believe that you would be sitting in Jimi Hendrix? Um, flat playing guitar. No, I didn't. And <laughs> that's interesting because like when I first started learning guitar, Jimi Hendrix was who I wanted to sound like. Really? Yeah. Like when I first picked up guitar, I was like, I want to be able to play like Hendrix. Yeah. And now I'm sitting in Hendrix, yeah. Yeah. just playing yeah. his songs, which is pretty cool. Surreal, yeah. I think is the word. Yeah. Whenever we would play this, our drummer would just start speeding up the tempo. So like by the end of this song, we'd be moving like, like it would just keep getting faster and faster until we couldn't keep up. Thank you very much for the tour. That was very kind of you. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. We will. Ah, this used to be the upstairs. Before they closed it off. Young Hendrix. Bob Dylan. Twenty-seven years old. Uh, imagine if he lived twenty more years. Yeah. Even twenty more. Get a line of full life. 
It was saying that he used his flat to do interviews. Uh, you can see that's his bed that we just saw. Uh, but he had like sometimes three or four interviews a day. You know, and he invited people here after gigs and stuff like that. Uh, it's funny that, because the lady said he, when he first moved in here, he believed that he was moving into Handel's house. Uh, <coughs> which is sort of true, because Handel lives down, lived downstairs. Uh, and Jimmy had this flat, not at the same time, but you know. And this was, this was, in different, his first, his first real home was yeah, yeah, his first real home, and his last real home. But yeah, we are out of here.